The difference between a bound person and a liberated one is that the ordinary person lives in the brain, unaware of themselves in the heart. The jnani lives in the heart. When they move about and deal with people and things, they know that what they see is not separate from the one supreme reality. The Brahman, which they have realised in the heart, as their own self, the real. The ordinary person sees things outside themselves. They are separate from the world, from their own deeper truth, from the truth that supports them and what they see. The one who has realised the supreme truth of their own existence realises the one supreme reality that is there behind them, behind the world. In fact, they are aware of the one as the real, the self in selves, in all things, eternal and immutable in all that is impermanent and mutable. The undifferentiated consciousness of pure being is the heart, which is what you really are. From the heart arises the I amness as the primary datum of one's experience. By itself, it is completely pure in character. It is in this form of pristine purity, uncontaminated by rajas and tamas, activity and inertia, that the eye appears to subsist in the jnani. The existence of the ego in any form, either in the jnani or the adnani, is itself an experience. But to the anjani, who is deluded into thinking that the waking state and the world are real, the ego also appears to be real. Since he sees the jnani act like other individuals, he feels constrained to posit some notion of individuality with reference to the jnani also. But the I-thought, 
the sense of individuality, does not function in the jnani at all. The jnani's real nature is the heart itself because they are one and identical with the undifferentiated, pure consciousness referred to by the Upanishads as the full consciousness. The full consciousness is truly Brahman, the Absolute, and there is no Brahman other than full consciousness. The main qualities of the ordinary mind are sloth and excitement. Hence, it is full of egoistic desires and weaknesses. But the jnani's mind is pure harmony and formless, functioning in the subtle sheath of knowledge through which they keep contact with the world. Their desires are therefore also pure. Why worry yourself about the world and what happens to it after self-realization? First realize the self. What does it matter if the world is perceived or not? Do you gain anything to help you in your quest by the non-perception of the world during sleep? Conversely, what would you lose now by the perception of the world? It is quite immaterial to the jnani or the anyani if they perceive the world or not. It is seen by both, but their viewpoints differ. Seeing the world, the jnani sees the self, which is a substratum of all that is seen. The anyani, whether they see the world or not, is ignorant of their true being, the self. Take the instance of moving pictures on the screen in the cinema show. What is there in front of you before the play begins? Merely the screen. On that screen, you see the entire show. And for all appearances, the pictures are real. But go and try and take hold of them. What do you take hold of? Merely the screen on which the pictures appeared. After the play, 
when the pictures disappear, what remains? The screen again. So with the self, that alone exists. The pictures come and go. If you hold on to the self, you will not be deceived by the appearance of the pictures. Nor does it matter at all if the pictures appear or disappear. Ignoring the self, the Anyani thinks the world is real. Just as ignoring the screen, they see merely the pictures, as if they existed apart from it. If one knows that without the seer, there is nothing to be seen, just as there are no pictures without the screen, one is not deluded. The jnani knows that the screen and its pictures are only the self. With the pictures, the self is in its manifest form. Without the pictures, it remains in the unmanifest form. To the jnani, it is quite immaterial if the self is in one form or the other. They are always the self. But the anyani, seeing the jnani active, gets confounded. The self alone is, and nothing else. However, it is differentiated owing to ignorance. Differentiation is threefold. Firstly, of the same kind. Secondly, of a different kind. And thirdly, as parts in itself. The world is not another self similar to the self. It is not different from the self, nor is it part of the self. If you ask, is the world reflected on the self? For reflection, there must be an object and an image. But the self does not admit of these differences. The jnani may dream, but they know it to be a dream. In the same way as they know the waking state to be a dream. You may call them dream number one and dream number two. The jnani 
being established in the fourth state, the Turiya, the supreme reality. They detachedly witness the three other states, waking, dreaming, and dreamless sleep, as pictures superimposed on it. For those who experience waking, dream, and sleep, the state of wakeful sleep, which is beyond those three states, is named Turiya, the fourth. But since that Turiya alone exists, and since the seeming three states do not exist, Know for certain that Turiya is itself that which transcends the fourth. For the jnani, there is no distinction between the three states of mind. How can there be when the mind itself is dissolved and lost in the light of consciousness? For the jnani, all the three states are equally unreal. But the ignorant person is unable to comprehend this because for them the standard of reality is the waking state. Whereas for the jnani, the standard of reality is reality itself. This reality of pure consciousness is eternal by its nature and therefore subsists equally during what you call waking, dreaming and sleep. To one who is one with that reality, there is neither the mind nor its three states and therefore neither introversion nor extroversion. They are the ever-waking state because they are awake to the eternal self. Theirs is the ever-dreaming state because to them, the world is no better than a repeatedly presented dream phenomenon. Theirs is the ever-sleeping state, because they are at all times without the body am I consciousness. There is bodily sensation for the jnani and the understanding that they have a body. The I am the body idea is common to both jnani and anjani with this difference. 
that the ignorant person thinks only the body is myself. Whereas the jnani knows all is of the self or all this is Brahman. If there be pain in the body, let it be. It is also part of the self. The self is perfect. After transcending the I am the body idea, one becomes Anyani. In the absence of that idea, there cannot be either doership or doer. So Anyani has no karma and performs no actions. That is their experience. Otherwise, they are not Anyani. However, the ignorant person identifies the Jnani with their body, which the Jnani does not do. You may say, I see you doing things. How can you say that you never perform actions? But I'll answer. The radio sings and speaks. But if you open it, you will find no one inside. Similarly, my existence is like the space. Though this body speaks like the radio, there is no one inside as a doer. Various illustrations are given in books to enable us to understand how the jnani can live and act without the mind. Although living and acting require the use of the mind. The potter's wheel goes on turning round even after the potter has ceased to turn it because the pot is finished. In the same way, the electric fan goes on revolving for some minutes after we switch off the current. The Parabdha or predestined karma, which created the body, will make it go through whatever activities it was meant for. But the jnani goes through all these activities without the notion that they are the doer of them. It is hard to understand how this is possible. The illustration generally given is that the jnani performs actions in some such way as a child that is roused from sleep to eat 
eats but does not remember the next morning that it ate. It has to be remembered that all these explanations are not for the jnani. They know and have no doubts. They know they are not the body and they know that they are not doing anything even though the body may be engaged in some activity. These explanations are for the onlookers who think of the jnani as one with a body and cannot help identifying them with their body. There are various controversies or schools of thought as to whether a jnani can continue to live in their physical body after realisation. Some hold that one who dies cannot be a jnani because their body must vanish into air or some such thing. They put forward all sorts of funny notions. If one must at once leave their body when they realise the self, I wonder how any knowledge of the self or the state of realisation can come down to other people. And that would mean that all those who have given us the fruits of their self-realisation in books cannot be considered jnanis because they went on living after realisation. And if it is held that a person cannot be considered a jnani so long as they perform actions in the world, then not only the great sages who carried on various kinds of work after attaining jnana must be considered anjanas, but the gods also, and Ishwara, the supreme personal god, themselves, since they continue looking after the world. The fact is that any amount of action can be performed and performed quite well by the jnani without their identifying themselves with it in any way or ever imagining that they are the doer. Some power acts through their body and uses their body to get the work done. An ignorant person sees someone as a jnani and identifies them with the body because they do not know the self and mistake their body for the self. They extend the same mistake to the state of the jnani. The jnani is therefore considered to be the physical frame Again, since the ignorant person 
though they are not the doer, imagine themselves to be the doer and consider the actions of the body their own. They think the jnani to be similarly acting when the body is acting. But the jnani knows himself, knows the truth, and is not confounded. The state of a jnani cannot be determined by the ignorant person. And therefore, such questions trouble only the anjani and never arises for the jnani. If they are a doer, they must determine the nature of the actions. The self cannot be the doer. Find out who is the doer, and the self is revealed. The jnani also sees no one as an anjani. All are only jnanis in their sight. In the ignorant state, one superimposes one's ignorance on a jnani and mistakes them for a doer. In the state of jnana, the jnani sees nothing separate from the self. The self is all shining and only pure jnana. So there is no anjana in their sight. There is an illustration for this kind of illusion or superimposition. Two friends went to sleep side by side. One of them dreamt that both of them had gone on a long journey and that they had strange experiences. On waking up, he recapitulated them and asked his friend if it was not so. The other one simply ridiculed him, saying that it was only a dream and could not affect the other. So it is with the Anyani who superimposes their illusory ideas on others. The jnani sees the differences between people and things as but appearances. They see them as not separate from the true, the real, with which they are one. Equality is the true sign of jnana. The very term equality implies the existence of differences. It is a unity that the jnani perceives in all differences, which I call equality. A 
equality does not mean ignorance of distinctions. When you have the realization, you can see that these differences are very superficial, that they are not at all substantial or permanent. And what is essential in all these appearances is the one truth, the real, that I call unity. You refer to sound, taste, form, smell, and so on. It is true the jnani appreciates the distinctions, but they always perceive and experience the one reality in all of them. That is why they have no preferences. Whether they move about, or talk, or act, it is all the one reality in which they act, or move, or talk. There is nothing apart from the one supreme truth. The jnani conducts himself with absolute equality towards all. Friendship, kindness, happiness and such other attitudes become natural to them. Affection towards the good, kindness towards the helpless happiness in doing good deeds, forgiveness towards the wicked. All such things are natural characteristics of the jnani. They are the same in any state or condition, as they know the reality, the truth. In their daily routine of taking food, moving about and all the rest, they act only for others, not a single action is done for themselves. Just as there are people whose profession is to mourn for a fee, so also the jnanis do things for the sake of others with detachment, without themselves being affected by them. The jnani weeps with the weeping, laughs with the laughing, plays with the playful, sings with those who sing, keeping time to the song. What do they lose? Their presence is like a pure, transparent mirror. It reflects the image exactly as it is. But the jnani, who is only a mirror, is unaffected by actions. How can a mirror 
or the stand on which it is mounted, be affected by the reflections. Nothing affects them as they are mere supports. On the other hand, the actors in the world, the doer of all acts, the ignorant people, must decide for themselves what song and what action is for the welfare of the world, what is in accordance with the sastras, and what is practicable. There is said to be Siddhaya Mukta, liberated while still in the body, and Videya Mukta, liberated at the time of death. But there is no liberation. And where are the Muktas? Mukti is synonymous with the self. The Jivan Mukti and the Videya Mukti are all for the ignorant. The Jnani is not conscious of Mukti or bondage. Bondage, liberation and orders of Mukti are all said for an ignorant person in order that ignorance might be shaken off. There is only mukti and nothing else. The difference, them and I, are the obstacles to jnana. In the Viveka Churamani, Shankara says that after the dissolution of the physical sheath, the liberated person becomes like water poured into water and oil into oil. It is a state in which there is neither bondage nor liberation. Taking another body means throwing a veil, however subtle, upon reality, which is bondage. Liberation is absolute and irrevocable. You say the jnani sees the path, treads it, comes across obstacles, avoids them, and so on. In whose eyesight is all this? In the jnani's or yours? They see only the self, and all in the self. For instance, you see a reflection in the mirror 
and the mirror. You know the mirror to be the reality and the picture in it a mere reflection. Is it necessary that to see the mirror we should cease to see the reflection in it? The jnani's mind is known only to the jnani. One must be a jnani oneself in order to understand another jnani. However, the peace of mind which permeates the saint's atmosphere is the only means by which the seeker understands the greatness of the saint. Their words or actions or appearance are no indication of their greatness, for they are ordinarily beyond the comprehension of common people. A child and a jnani are similar in a way. Incidents interest a child only so long as they last. It ceases to think of them after they have passed away. So then, it is apparent that they do not leave any impression on the child and it is not affected by them mentally. So it is with a jnani. There is no one besides the self. Therefore, no jnani or anjani. Coming here, some people do not ask about themselves. They ask, Does the Jivan Mukta see the world? Are they affected by karma? What is liberation after being disembodied? Is one liberated only after being disembodied or even while alive in the body? Should the body of the sage resolve itself in light or disappear from view in any other manner? Can they be liberated though the body is left behind as a corpse? These questions are endless. Why worry oneself in so many ways? Does liberation consist in knowing these things? Therefore, I say to them, leave liberation alone. Is there bondage? Know this. See yourself first and foremost. <laughs> 